Are you looking for any music from Jim Jones or 50 Cent? Are you like excited about them in particular putting out new music? I'm, I kind of am, like, I, you know, a little bit, probably more so Jim Jones than actually 50, but um, are you? I wouldn't mind it. Am I looking forward to it? Nah. There's so, so many different aspects. I'd rather have a Jim Jones in the studio talking about business. I want to hear about that ownership in this football league. How's that affecting him with business right now? You mean another rapper turned blogger? <laughs> <laughs> nah. I want the rapper to sit back and give us a dynamic interview like rappers and entertainers are supposed to do. And I get behind the microphone and conduct interviews because some of them, most of them look fucking silly doing it when they should be here. Not necessarily in this chair, but in chairs around the country giving the interviews and then falling the fuck back. That's you a way many of them don't want to be in front of the camera. But Jim Jones is dope how he uses social media. He's in a workout game. I would love to sit back and have a conversation with that brother. More so listen to his music. That's his real. Him on 50 would definitely, you know, be dope. But yeah, that kind of um, elaborate more on that. Like you said, it's a wave thing where you see all these rappers now coming into the podcast game. No different than when you see everybody wants to be a rapper or a singer now. It's like oh, they see other people. Yeah, they see other people doing it. Now they want to do it. Oh, shit, I got those by a microphone and talk, and I already got a following, so it just may work. Right, right. Leave it to the professionals. Let them do what they do. I ain't trying to be a rapper. We ain't trying to be a rapper. But it's it's never. I am a singer, though. Yeah, he definitely R&B singer. They're going to say, I'll say, this nigga fucking shit. Look, yeah. No, nah, I mean, you know, it's just, you know, it's funny for some people because you see it don't last long. Yeah, yeah. It's not passion. They're not passionate about it. But if you're passionate about it and you do it the right way, I mean, what can we say, man? It, it's, the door is open for anybody. It's a free country. Some some people that do it, and it's not everybody, and this isn't a, a, a hating game or anything like that because some people are dope at it. Some people yeah. are fans of You know what I'm saying? It's the... When you can obviously see there's a way you don't take it serious, when you don't really care, when it's just an easy bag for you because you got a name and it's an easy lane to slip in, you can't help but to feel a little bit disrespected when you're out here putting foot to grass, foot to, to concrete every day on the grind of this shit, trying to make something for yourself. So that's all we're saying. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Now, speaking of something today, Sam, man, I was actually listening to Tax Stone. He was on his Instagram live and he posted up. Who be going live from prison? I think Rikers Island. He's sitting in today. Well, a little bit after I heard him go live with the, with the young lady on Instagram, he put out this message on his Twitter, and he put, "Dear beloved, love who loves you. I'm currently in my grave with my eyes open, dirt up to my neck, getting dizzy as the world turns. Watching the news from my grave, as NYC is the epicenter of the global pandemic." Of the virus called the Rona 19. That's literally out of a serial, uh, the control of a serial killer. I watched district attorneys and the head of board corrections play judge during the executioner as the same virus spreads rapidly through Rikers Island. The island I'm currently being housed on for a month now. We haven't been allowed visits, legal or social, understandable considering what's going on. But what I don't understand is how people we have contact with on the inside. The correctional officers and the civilians have no protective gear and they aren't giving us anything to protect ourselves. There has been no extra sanitation, no hand sanitizer, nothing. And they're only being tested if they have symptoms. So I ask myself, how are we being infected if we only been in contact with, with the civilians and correctional officers? Easy because they have it. Then he goes on to say, then I watch the news and I can see you can only have it and not had not only have the symptoms or whatever. So he goes on, he says a lot, you know, there I heard, you know, what he was saying. And it's one thing to read it, but to hear his tone of voice, I think he's in a bad, bad place right now. It's a couple more pages for people that want to um see it. You can go to his Instagram and check out the rest. I'm not gonna read the whole thing. It's like three pages, but um I followed Tax Stone early on yeah. and doing this, and he was, you know, um one of the pioneers, obviously, right behind Combat Jack in this whole podcast game. And um, we know now he stands. He's for trial for killing Troy Abs, one of his close friends, a banger. Mm-hmm. He's supposed to go to trial, um, I think, this month coming up. And um, so what do you think, though, Sam, man? Mostly, I don't know, you don't know a lot about tax, though, but yeah. the conditions and them letting some prisoners leave, yeah. like Rat9, mm-hmm. but they let some prisoners actually stay, stay in there when the Rona – is spreading rapidly through these prisons. It just shows you that they don't care. And this is where it's serious. And it would be no different if this was the flu that was going around in December, the flu that was going around last year, Word. that was shutting people down for weeks at a time. 
if you get that in a enclosed environment where people aren't being properly taken care of and health measures aren't being properly taken, you're going to have bodies dropping, especially if you're not caring, especially if you aren't even taking the proper health measures as far as sanitizing, make sure you have gloves enclosed environments where you go, okay, then hospitals, prisons, uh, grocery mart, supermarket, wherever it is, a closed environment with a group of people, you would think you want to take these kind of measures if you're going to be there in a certain amount of time and they don't even give a fuck. Mm -hmm. It's disgusting. And I wonder if these numbers are in the statistics of the worldwide numbers of state numbers of people mm -hmm. falling or do they even give it that? Mm -hmm. It just goes to show you that even though people are in prison for whatever they are, whether they made the mistake or whether they're in there justly, the majority of people in society don't treat them as equal human beings. Facts. And that's wrong. And a lot of people don't think they should be. And, and, and the crazy part about it, you talk about a place like Rikers Island, it's a holding facility, so people are waiting mm -hmm. to be tried. So you have to give them the presumption of innocence. Mm -hmm. You can't just assume that they're guilty. So that means that, not even saying that people that have been convicted need to be treated this way, but as long as you ain't been convicted, you deserve to have all the basic necessities. And that's bleach to clean up. He was talking about on a live that ain't have bleach, like just regular stuff to clean up. And if you ain't have money in the commissary, you couldn't get soap and, you know, just a whole bunch of stuff like that. I mean, we can sit up here and say he's complaining, but this is a virus that's taking out people. We seen, he was, he was even saying that since he had a cellmate two doors down while he was on his interview, found out that his mom died from the Rona. Mm. You know what I mean? While he was doing his interview on Instagram live. So it's real for some people. Um, I seen another guy that I know today on Facebook put it at his aunt passed. Mm. So it seems like it's getting closer and closer because we was always asking, like, I don't know nobody mm. with the loan. And now I'm starting to see people that I know saying that their family members passed on. And but it's really to be expected yeah. because it's it tells you that you know, older people, people with weaker immune systems, people obese um that are um, obese and have lower, you know, um health standards are more susceptible. Mm -hmm to um, get it and pass away from it. So, unfortunately. yeah, unfortunately. So, I mean, you know, just like the thing happened in Mississippi, hopefully we can see a trickle down effect that people begin to stand up and begin to, you know, elicit lawyers and things to start suing these prisons and, and different County jails yeah. for these conditions. It's the only thing you could do. We can sit up here and cry and talk about it and say, well, it was me. But until you, you know, get them, you hit them in the pocket, bring them to court, it's not going to change. But to the people, um, Send them some love, you know, uh, write uh, tax stone. You know what I mean? If you're a fan of them, send them letters and whatnot. That's all you could do at this point. The unfortunate part, some of these inmates, and I'm not condoning any of their actions. If you're in there and you've been convicted of a, a crime, you took somebody's life, you violated a woman or a child, um, karma will come to you. That ain't me. I'm not just Damn. a jury or executioner. But Damn. at the end of the day, no, and you still deserve civil rights to live as a human being. Right. Whether they, while, while you sit there for the rest of your life, while your liberties, your freedoms are taken away, you still deserve to sit there like a human being. I'm not taking that away from anybody. Um, but this just goes to show you they don't really care, and you got to be careful, man. This right here is just a, a, a harsh reality to America and where we live in, man. Little Nas X. Little Nas X took to his Twitter, Sam Ant, and he put, okay, I'm gay again, where the hoes at? Then he comes out and says, look, I was never gay. I said it all to build up the fuel for April Fool's Day. Ha ha. Got you guys. What's up with Lil Nas X? Think Lil Nas X is uh, playing with the people the whole time? I thought he was the whole time. I don't give a damn what this kid talking about. I thought it was a ploy the whole time to get attention. Right. Um, sorry to anybody that takes offense to that. I said it then. I'm going to say it now. And now he's flip-flopping. It's not going to be surprising when that kid's 30, 35 years old. He got a wife and kids. <laughs> Believe that, right? Yeah, 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 definitely. I mean, that, that pretty much is, you know, what I mean, what it is. Um, I can't say I ain't think it was gay, <laughs> I know, <laughs> yeah, right? Dumping around, dancing and shit, <laughs> doing handstands and shit. Nah, but shout out to little Nas X, man. Um, that is what it is, the young brother, man. You check it for his music. How do you think his career is going to go from here? I think he's now in personality role. And his music will go absolutely nowhere from here. That ain't no disrespect. Dang. Oh, bang. Or Dang. Bang. One of the greatest singles to ever <laughs> out of all time. And I think it's on. <laughs> Said the same thing about Cardi B and she proved me wrong. So I'm not always right. Yeah, definitely. All right, Sam, man. What were you thinking about last night? You were sitting there. You was watching my man uh, Scott Storch go against Manny Fresh. Now, from the consensus that you said and other people said, you said that, look, yo, 
Man, he first got wiped out right there. But I was listening to Charlemagne, the guy, this morning. And he was like, y'all hating on the South. 